Well, thank you again, Jasmine and Ben, uh, for getting up and telling us about change and also your career path. Uh, and I think it's pretty fascinating that, um, especially for someone like Jasmine, she was able to combine both her interests because a lot of times we feel like, oh, we can do one thing, but we're not able to get 100%. Um, and sometimes it just takes a little bit of time, um, and sometimes it takes finding the right environment. Um, but I think no matter what, it takes being honest with ourselves. Right? And so I want that to sort of be the theme um, as I'm going to you know, talk about today's topic. Uh, before we dig into today's topic, though, I want to just take a couple minutes to give you a little bit of background because I know I see some new faces and you may or may not be familiar with Femgineer and what we do. Uh, so Femgineer originally began as a blog back in 2007 on engineering and entrepreneurship. Um, I really just started it because I wanted a creative outlet. Uh, at the time, I was the founding engineer of Mint.com, uh, and I didn't have any idea of what it was going to become years later. But fortunately for me, in the last year and a half, I decided that I really wanted this to be an education company and that our mission is to help uh, women in particular get into technical leadership positions. Those can be inside of organizations, they can be uh, people who want to build their own products, it doesn't matter. Um, we happily support men, we've had actually about 50% of our students uh, are men. Um, and then the other thing that we do is we want to also be in some local communities and of course uh, what better place to start than our own backyard, right? So uh, we hold this type of event once a month and the goal of the forums is unlike other events, um, it's to give you some strategies, strategies that you can actually take back and use, whether it's tomorrow or six months or a year down the road. Uh, and so the way that we do that is obviously have some talks, give you uh, some ideas of other people who are doing great things, but then have you also practice. So I'm going to encourage you to stay through as much of the event as possible and work with us in the breakout sessions so that you can actually practice some of the strategies that I'm going to talk about today. Um, you're not going to have this kind of opportunity necessarily later on. I know how difficult it is to bounce ideas off of coworkers or even peers. Uh, so here's your chance to kind of capitalize on this time um, and make use of this opportunity. So let's get on to today's topic. And uh, you know, today's topic is how do you evaluate your technical track? And so what we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what are some roles that are actually out there? Because I think there's some roles that people think exist, but they may not know what those entail, um, or they might feel like there's only one or two paths, there's not a whole lot available. So we're going to talk about that. And then we're also going to talk about going down a technical track. Right? And what that means. I know a lot of people come to me um, at a certain point in their career. It's either in the beginning or maybe even just two years after. Sometimes it's even you know, five or ten years in. Um, and they've just been doing the same thing over and over again. And they feel like that's all there is, that there isn't anything else out there. And so what I want to actually leave you um, with today is a sense of, wow, there are a lot of opportunities. And maybe uh, you might be holding yourself back or maybe you haven't explored some of them. And of course, just because you know, there is a technical side uh, doesn't mean that you can't go down a management track. But what I want to do is at least give you a sense of what uh, some things might be in management that you haven't considered and leave the decision up to you of what path you want to go down. And then finally, we'll talk about how do you actually do the transition, right? Because it's not enough to just say, hey, I want to be technical or you know, a managerial position, right? How do we actually move from one space to the other? So when I went to college uh, back, at, it was actually a pretty small college. I graduated with about 250 students. And at the time, I did not feel like I was the smartest you know, tool in the shed, uh, the sharpest tool in the shed. There you go. Uh, in fact, um, you know, I, I worked hard. I double majored. And I, I had to work while I was in college. So uh, I always felt like you know, I was an average student. Um, I certainly was very studious. But there were engineers in my class who were just brilliant, you know, both men and women uh, who had like 4.0s. And when I asked them what they would do after they graduated, they were like, oh, uh, I'm going to be an investment banker or I'm going to go and you know, be a, a business consultant. And I just thought, you write such great code and you have all these awesome ideas. Like, don't you want to build stuff? And for me, I, I mean, I think I've evolved over time and I've gotten better, but I always just marveled at these people that decided that they didn't want to be technical uh, and that they wanted to go down a different path. 
And so I saw this you know, first drop-off point, and like I said, it happened to both men and women. It wasn't as if all the women were dropping off. I saw, certainly saw a number of, of men. And then you know, I got into the job force, and of course, when you're starting off, you're pretty inexperienced. You don't know a lot. There's a really steep learning curve, right? And so once again, you feel like, wow, is this really for me? Is it going to get any better? And for, for those people that I had befriended um, who were still in, who were still engineers, I noticed that you know, once again, a, a year or two into their careers, they had this thought. They were like, I don't know, like, I don't know what the day-to-day -day is going to be like. Uh, it feels like all I'm doing is sitting in a cubicle, and I feel like you know, I'm so inexperienced, and all these people are, are way more amazing, um, and so I'm going to once again drop off. So at this point, I was getting kind of frustrated. I was like, I'm going to be like the only engineer in the world, and maybe even the only female engineer in the world left if this continues, right? There's got to be something that can be done to get people to stick around. Uh, and so I started to ask people. I started to ask them, you know, what were the problems and the challenges that they experienced? And then I also asked the people who were sticking around why they decided to stick around. Uh, and what I discovered was that the people that stuck around and the people that didn't didn't stick around all pretty much came down to their environment and as I started to mentor people you know I'd ask them questions like what even got you into engineering why did you decide to stay you know in it why, why have you come this far um, and they would say like I just love to build you know that's what I love to do uh, and I like to make a difference in the world and I like to see people proud of the products that I've built and engaged with them uh, and then, you know, I'd take the same group and I'd, I'd, or a different group of people and I'd ask them, well, you know, all of you who are thinking about leaving, you know, what's, what's the challenge? Why is it that you're not interested? And a lot of them would say, well, I'm, I'm leaving because I just hate my boss <laughs> or I hate my company or I'm worked to death or the deadlines are really harsh. And so I would ask the question, if we removed all of that, right, would you still be around? Would you still be interested? And the resounding answer was yes, right? They still love to build, but something or someone had gotten in their way and made it so that they were no longer interested. And so that's when I discovered that it isn't about, you know, this being super challenging or, you know, being smart or being dumb or any of that. It really came down to people not being in an environment that gave them the support that they needed to advance. Uh, and part of that support was also highlighting, you know, what they can do in order to advance and what sort of the different levels are. So a lot of times when I talk to people, they just feel stuck. And some of you out there might be in this position right now where you're just feeling stuck, right? You're not sure how to make the next move. You're not even sure if there are opportunities out there uh, or you're not sure if you have the right skills. And so there's a lot of questions going on in your head that lead you to believe, hey, maybe being technical isn't the right option. But it's actually the, the opposite, right? It's more of your environment and sort of the way in which the, the position you've taken has put you. It's not about you not you know, having the skills. Now, the other is sometimes you know, we do get these people who fall out. Uh, maybe it's five years in or 10 years in, uh, and they, they still have this passion to build, right? So they might have become a product manager, or they might have still been in a tech company, um, but they decided to take on a role as, uh, you know, a, in a business unit. And I'm not you know, disparaging them, but they still have this passion. They still like go home and tinker or build apps and do all this fun stuff. But when I ask them, well, why don't you just do this full time, right? They feel like it's too late. It's, oh, it's just too late in my career. You know, there's, now's not a good time. Or I've, you know, gotten really rusty in my skills. And therefore, like, you know, I'm not going to change. Well, here's the thing, you know, about coding. It's kind of like riding a bike, right? You fall off, you get back on. And despite the technologies that change, right? One day we're using Java, the next day we're using J like JavaScript, and there's all these frameworks, that's going to constantly change. But if you think about it, the fundamentals always stay the same, right? We still have some object-oriented programming, uh, or we still have you know, design fundamentals. So we can always rest upon these. We just have to learn sort of the new languages, but it doesn't mean that we're not capable. 